Eastgate is such a great community of believers and a wonderful church family. And that's because of the people that make up the congregation, the heritage that we have and celebrate. And last Sunday night, if, if you weren't here, you know, inflict whatever cruel punishment you should upon yourself because you missed out on perhaps the greatest service of the year. And uh, Brother Edwards preached so incredible. And this is also Pastor Appreciation Month. And as we are, um, we'd be remiss not to spend a moment here in honor of our bishop and Sister Edwards as we realize that for 35 years, you know, they came to Vider, I guess now 43 years ago. And uh, that's before Vider was real cool. You know, it was kind of like Samaria. You know? But he, he came and, um, and made it cool. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> And stuck, st stuck with it. And I, I always say the devil's solution is singular. It's always the same, no matter what. He has one solution for every problem. Quit. Quit your marriage, quit your job, until finally you quit your life. And that's the same solution he offers to preachers. Quit, give up, turn around. There's another church somewhere else that will treat you better. But when the enemy came and said quit, Bishop said, I'll stay. And he's given me great words of counsel throughout the eight years that I've been here. But the first word he ever spoke to me and said, Matt, you're going to make it if you make this decision. Stay. Just don't ever leave. And so uh, he might have regretted saying that to me a few times since then. But uh, we're going to stay. And we're going to keep this legacy of truth and this one God message alive in Vider, Texas. I'd like to honor you, Bishop, if you'd come. Come on, I'm going to give you some money. Amen. Hallelujah. It's a good day. Yeah, come, both of them come. Amen. Hey, it takes a team. I'm going to tell you. Uh, it takes a team. Why don't we give the Lord great praise for Brother and Sister Edwards? Thank you, Pastor. What a great honor to be associated and still associated with this church. I honor our pastor and his wife and all the members of our church. And we're growing daily. God adds to the church daily, such as should be saved. So thank you so much. We love every one of you. And uh, we're just excited of what God's doing uh, with this church, with our pastor, and glad that we're able to be here. So many times, it just don't work out that way, and you know that. but. It worked out great for us, and we're thankful for that. I stand behind our pastor and his wife 100%, and we're thankful for our friends and uh, people in this church that have uh, extended to us great courtesy and love. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Why don't we give Bishop and Sister Edwards a big hand? And... Amen. It's always kind of awkward when you're the one being honored, but they do it with such grace, and I'm so thankful. And uh, let's turn to Esther chapter 6, verse 13. In your Bible, we're so glad you're here today, and uh, I'm thankful for my wife. A lot of times they get up here and talk about me, but it really is. We have a, I have an incredible wife, and I love her. I don't talk about enough about her. And I got some brownie points today, I think, because she came in. I said, hey, is that a new outfit? She's like, yeah, it is. I got it yesterday. I said, oh, man, good for me. I felt pretty good about myself. I was like, man, I noticed, you know. So, uh, amen. I'm blessed. We're, so, we're blessed. Esther chapter 6 and verse 13, And Haman told Jerish, his wife, and all his friends, everything that had befallen him. Then said his wise men and Jerish, his wife, unto him, If Mordecai be the seed of the Jews, before whom thou hast begun to fall, thou shalt not prevail against him, but shall surely fall before him. Look at your neighbors say, the weapon will not prosper. The weapon will not prosper. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for everything you've done. For your people, your name, and for the glory. That we are recipients of your grace. That you've extended mercy. Today, as your word comes to us, I pray that it would be received with willing hearts. Seed that's planted into soil fir that's ready, Lord, to be fertile and ready to receive what you would speak. I pray that you would bring to memory that which you've given to me in prayer and study, that it would come with grace as you desired to come. In Jesus' name, as one people we say amen. 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 You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Let's give the Lord another great praise for his word. We 
see the really a, a culture that's kind of in decline at this point, uh, the devaluing of humanity, uh, with, as I've mentioned, over 70 uh, million abortions that take place annually. It begins, the source of it, no doubt, is in elementary school where our children are being instructed that they are the result of a cosmic explosion, that particles swirled in the abyss and kaboom, the earth was formed. I always say, where did the particles come from? Because nothing can, it's impossible for nothing to produce something. So there has to be a, a source for something. But as a result, they're told of this cosmic explosion out in the middle of nowhere. The result is a perfectly spinning earth tilted 23.5 degrees towards the sun at a perfect angle, spinning not just at any speed, at the perfect speed to create gravity that will hold us in place on the earth. It's in a perfect galaxy for the earth suspended on nothing. Then, magically, over the next few billion years, an amoeba showed up. And the amoeba, after a few more billion years, got a little bigger. And then it turned into a fish. And this, this fish was very vibrant. It flopped up on a seashore one day and turned into a monkey. Now, this took billions of years. <laughs> billions of years. Billions of years later, you walked into church this morning. And that's what the educated people of our world are telling us. These super smart people, they have no evidence. It's a theory of evolution that says, and they're the ones that say, we believe in fairy tales. But no doubt the rot of our culture is linked back to this false theory, the lie, telling humanity, young people, telling all of us that we're just the result of some chance. That, that, that over the course of time, without intelligent design, the world became better, and now, now here we are. But I know this is a lie. I know this is a, li a lie. And you're like, well, how do you know? You, what, what degree do you have? I, I have degrees, but more importantly, I have a long lineage of redneck. <laughs> I come, y'all think, these viters, they y'all ain't redneck. This is big city people. I'm from the real rednecks. My mother is from a town called Blue Goose. You thought Vider was bad. Blue Goose, Tennessee. Yes, there is a place. My family is from there, and I have a cousin named Benicia. I got a cousin named Wendell. He's got a mullet. I got an aunt, uh, Uncle Jimmy and an Aunt Jane and an Uncle Lloyd. My great-grandfather Arnold, Blue Goose, Tennessee, never sold a car in his life. Am I right, Dad? He didn't sell cars. No, nope, neither did Uncle Lloyd. No, nope, no, nope. he had a conversion van. He had that van when I was born. He had that van when he died. He had four Lincoln Town cars, three or four Lincoln Town cars. He had a Buick. How many motorhomes did he have? Do you remember? At least three motorhomes that he had. He had old trucks. And, and you didn't sell trucks. No, man, you don't sell those. You put them out in the pasture. That's, that's where you keep the chicken feed. <laughs> and uh, I was out there one day. He said, go out there and get the chicken feed out of this 1970-something truck. And it was amazing. I went out there, and this truck had begun its transition. And it was turning into a 2023 Rolls-Royce Phantom. I'm just kidding. It's never happened. In the history of the world, have you put, you go take your truck, put it in, in, in your garage, come back in 100 years. It's not going to be a 2025, whatever. It's going to be a rotted piece of garbage. Because nothing gets better just by sitting there. It's a lie. It's a lie. I've never seen a house vacant that looked better than when the, the people that were in it left. It, it always goes downward. As a matter of fact, a forest, they say don't take, take care of the forest. It's actually the forest that we take care of that are less prone to forest fires. Is, I know that the, 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 the world wants to tell people are bad for the world. No, people are good for the world. And we are good for creation. We are here to have dominion over it. It's our job to manage and to care for it. And so I don't really care how many degrees they have. As a matter of fact, I think some of our problem is we've got people with too many degrees and enough, not enough doers. I'll say that again. We've got a lot of degrees, but nobody's doing anything. Matter of fact, we've got so smart, we've just come, come down to being stupid. Come on. 
I'm, I, I'm, I've got a degree, but I don't hang it on the wall. I'm embarrassed of it almost, you know, like, my goodness. And I shot a deer. Y'all should be proud of me. Anthony helped me. Scored 229. I'm right proud of it. Uh, actually, Anthony was holding the gun, and I just stuck my finger and just pulled the trigger, kind of how it went. <laughs> I got that sucker. I'm like, man, I got this $30,000 piece of paper hanging on my wall. I'd rather have my cool deer. Put, take the paper down. Put the deer there. Amen? And, uh, and so the result of all of this craziness is that value of humanity and life is just a glorified ame amoeba. No wonder the world acts like animals. I mean, you can't be surprised when teens run the streets wild like savages. They were told they were savages. You, you can't be in shock when, when, when they're killing each other and, and, and acting the fool when they told you're the result of an accident. But I don't care what Hollywood says. I don't care how pretty they are. I don't care what Washington, D.C. has to say. It doesn't matter what they say in Austin or Harvard University. I don't care what WebMD tells you. Uh, you are not the result of an accident. Uh, you are not the result of a mistake. Uh, you are not the result of a cosmic error. It's not happenstance, it's not chance, it's not luck, but it's divine providence. Holy hands that spent precious time knitting you together and forming you and you in the mothers of your in the womb of your mother were put together with divine destiny. You are the crown of God's creation. You, my friend, are the apple of his eye. You have not been left to chance. You are loved by God. And if I don't say anything else this morning and that's all you get, that should be enough to get you on your feet saying that's enough preacher I'm loved by God and my life is not mistaken my life is with purpose I'm on this planet for more than just taking up space living a few years indulging in the pleasures that fulfill me I'm here for divine purpose my mission in life is beyond time I have a mission I have a purpose in my life we must believe, young men, young women, you must believe that your life has greater purpose than just filling up space and living for pleasure. But that there is a divine call on your life. It's greater, greater than just luck, happenstance, or chance. But you are here, and if you're here for the first time, or maybe you've just started coming, let me just say this. You're not here today by accident. For there are no accidents in God. I said there is no coincidence in the house of God. And so we have a purpose. Look at your neighbor say, you have a purpose. As I was looking at purpose and understanding it, as I said before, much is said about purpose. It's a very used, abused, and overused word. But I could think of no person, perhaps other than Jesus, that rightfully and with excellence fulfills their purpose than this girl by the name of Esther. We are introduced to her after the king has removed his current queen, previous queen. Her name was Vashti from power. The king had been at a celebration of the 127 Persian provinces. He had gathered together all of the governors of those different states. And there they had had an extraordinary and extravagant party. It wasn't just birthday cake and ice cream, but for weeks on end they would drink and they would just please themselves. It was a, 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 a celebration of flesh and, and not a good thing. She, he calls for the queen and the queen refuses to come. Her reasoning is unknown. Whether it was she didn't want to be displayed in front of these men or she was a rebel. The one thing we know there was conflict in the palace. And as a result of conflict, she is removed from queen. It is now that the king is without a queen. And so his advisors come up with a wonderful plan to go and find the most beautiful girls from the 127 provinces. And he would be allowed to pick whichever one he felt was the most adequate that pleased him the most. I don't know whose idea it was, but I can guarantee you they got a raise. <laughs> Probably the best idea that they had ever had. Yeah. And Esther's a Jew, and she's at the, at, at the time, she, her name is Hadassah. Her parents have been killed in war. She's an orphan. Uh, she, her, her name at the time is, means tree. Uh, it will become star. Esther means star. Hadassah means tree. The tree turns into the star. Before you're a star, you have to learn how to be planted. Is what you've got to learn. And the Bible says that she was raised, and we know that she was raised by her cousin Mordecai. She really is an unknown, but she's selected for divine purpose. Who your, your parents are and the pedigree of your past does not hinder God's purpose in your life. 
your yesterday and what your, your parents' flaws do not hinder God's call on your life. And there's so many people that try to say, well, it's because your dad is so-and-so is the reason you're that. That is not true. The reason my, God's hand is on my life is because God has a purpose for my life. And that could have been true whether my dad, come on, was a painter, a preacher, or I, had I not known my father. The purpose of God is not linked, come on, to, come on, stop using who your dad isn't or who your dad is as an excuse to be what God has called you to be. Come on, you can be what God has called you to be. And so she is removed from her place and put into preparation to be queen. And her cousin Mordecai, he says, look, do not tell anyone of your Jewish idea, identity. Keep it concealed. She's taken to the palace and, and there for months she prepares to go before the king. Once she is presented, presented to the king, she is chosen to be queen. It was a a love at first sight moment and she's now the queen and she rules with grace and her position is filled with dig dignity at one point uh, Mordecai her cousin uh, saves the king's life and, and is an incredible uh, witness of truth there however as you know and most of you that are familiar with the story of Esther for those that aren't I'm bringing you along there was a man in the palace by the name of Haman Haman signifies Satan. He is the, the modern day Hamas or Hezbollah. He is the Hitler of the Second World War and his name was Haman. The Jewish people and the people of God have always had a Haman. They've always had somebody that was out to destroy them. And when you become part of the people of God, there's a Haman that's out to get you. He's the enemy. and he, This man is a representative of Satan or the adversary. And so he is, he is filled with arrogance and pride. As he would traverse throughout the kingdom, people would see him and they would bow to him and, and they would admire him and respect and worship him. And Mordecai, Esther's cousin, refused to bow. Satan desires one thing. He wants you to bow and he wants you to worship him. But the people of God that worship only one true living God Said, he said, we will not bow down to any other man. This, of course, infuriates Haman. He becomes so angry. And the Bible says that he went to the king and said, I will use my own resources. The current dollar amount would have been over $5 million. He said, but I will spend $5 million of my own dollars to have the Jews exterminated from the earth, the Israelis, the people of God. He said, I want them dead he began to build and construct gallows that he would hang Mordecai on. When Mordecai hears word of, of the plan, this devious plan that's conjured up in the mind of this evil man by the name of Haman under satanic influence, he instantly sends message. And he says, hey, go send a message to Esther. Also Mordecai in 4 and 8 gave him the copy of the writing of the decree that was given at Shushan to destroy them. He said, show it to Esther and to declare unto her and to charge her that she should go in unto the king to make supplication unto him and to make requests before him for her people. Esther's in the palace, he said, and I told her not to reveal her identity and here's why. Now God has just revealed to me why she's in the palace. She's in position, but she's not fulfilling purpose. And Mordecai had to be the one that went to her and said, I know you've got a title, a position, a crown, and you've got the garb but that's not why you're here the reason you're here is to save the world you I know you look good and you got your title and you're the Sunday school teacher and you're on the praise team but the call of God is not just to be Pastor Tuttle the call of God is to reach our world Come on, when you start thinking your position is the purpose, you're messed up. Come on, if you think your position is the purpose of your life, well, I'm the usher, so I'm, no, 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 no. The reason you're the usher, the reason you're the golf cart driver, the reason Jimmy Lane Mooney's the sheriff, come on, isn't just so we can walk around and say, I'm the sheriff. It's to keep our county safe. And the reason we live in America isn't so that we can just eat fat and get be rich. It's so that we can be, come on, the expanders of the gospel of light safety around the world so that truth can be preached come on thank God you got a position but my position's not my purpose she's in position and lots of times people with position get a little bit of an attitude but thank God she had a preacher because even though she was in position she didn't know what her purpose was 
Come on, somebody. Even though she's the queen, she still doesn't know why she's the queen. Come on. She had to have a man of God that could speak to her and say, the reason you're here is for A, B, C, X, Y, Z. And, 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 and Esther says, well, hold on just a second, verse 11. All the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces know that whosoever, man or woman, shall come into the king, the inner court, who is not called, there is a law, that he be put to death, except such to whom the king should hold out the golden scepter that they may live. But I've not been called to come into the king these 30 days. Esther said, look, dude, preacher, I hear what you're saying. You want me to go in and save the day, but you don't realize what that's going to cost. Come on, and here's where you learn that purpose. See, when I was talking about purpose, y'all are all up, oh, yeah, I got a purpose. I'm not, I'm not just a glorified amoeba. But then when I tell you that your purpose has a price tag. Well, come on, baby, you, you're telling me I've got to go in there? There's a price tag on that purpose, and you want to know what the price is, Mordecai? You want to know what the price is, Pastor? My life. The price tag of fulfilling the purpose in your life is your life. Let me say it again. The price tag of purpose is the sacrifice of your life. And until I said it's your life. She said it's going to cost me my life. I ain't doing that. I'm comfy, baby. I'm chill. I got servants. I got a Rolls Royce Phantom 2023 that evolved out of a 1970 truck from Blue Goose, Tennessee. I'm living big. I got servants and sleigh. I got air conditioning, leather seats that are cooled and heated. I don't even have to drive no more. I got a house with air conditioning. My life's good, man. Don't make me uncomfortable. Why you got to make me uncomfortable? We got padded pews. The church, I mean, it's good. We don't have to be building and raising money. That's going to be a lot of work and sacrifice. We don't have to come up here and work extra hours. Mordecai, he answered with these words. Mordecai in verse 13 said, Esther, think not with thyself that thou shalt escape the king's house more than all the Jews. For if you hold your peace, deliverance will come from another area, but thy and thy father's house shall be destroyed. He looked at her and said, hey girl, don't forget where you came from. Hmm. I, I, I said, don't forget I know you're sitting there you got your long skirt and your hair and you got your suit and tie and you came in and your Lexus and you got your nice house and you got everything good we got a cool building and everything's really great pastor's awesome I mean he's still looking really fit and nice and the sermons are beautiful and the music's elegant and man I felt goosebumps today and I just love to come and sit and I don't contribute and I don't give and I don't participate to... but don't forget where you came from. Don't you forget that if we forget to, what our purpose is and we fail to forget to fulfill it, God's gonna raise up somebody. He's gonna save this city some way. He's gonna save this world somehow. So come on, let me just remind you who we are. We are liars and drunks and adulterers. We are haters and backbiters and doubters. We are alcoholics and drug addicts. We are porn addicts and problem makers. That's who we are. But for the grace of God, and if you forget Get I think there's nothing more repulsive to God than a stuck up saint I said I can't think of anything more repulsive to heaven than a stuck up arrogant you were a piece of trash you were garbage I was broken I was mud in the backyard but the grace of God so if you wonder why we twirl and shout and dance and run and act the fool I'll tell you why it just takes a little road called memory lane and when I look back at what he did and all he has done when I think that my marriage should be broken that my mind should be blown that I should be in a prison cell but by by the grace of God I don't care what you think about me I know what my purpose is I said praise is a daily reminder 
You know the people that aren't stuck up, you can identify them mighty quick. They're the ones that don't care for they praise him according to his excellent greatness. They praise him according to his mighty acts. They look at what they were and where they are and they say there's only one reason, baby. There's only one reason I'm in this palace. It ain't because my dad is rich because I don't even know who my dad is. It ain't because my mama had a lot of money. I don't even know who my mother is. It's not because I was glorious or powerful. It's because of God. Can I get somebody Put your hands together Lift your voice And let the devil know I know where I came from I'm not too proud to give him praise On a Sunday morning I know the visitors are in the house But it don't matter There's a visitor greater than them He's called the king of kings And the lord of lords And the guest of honor has come And he's worthy She said, oh yeah. And when the preacher brought to her memory, come on. Why don't you be coming in my office? Well, hey, did you see so-and-so? They were, they, I, they were smoking a cigarette. Well, hey, Bo. Remember where you came from? Oh, sucker. She said, oh, she had to have a little reality check. Chick. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I got the tiara, the robe, and the, I'm, I'm good. But I, she's like, go gather together, 16, all the Jews that are present at Shushan and fast ye for me three days, day and night, neither drink. I, my handmaids, will do likewise. And so I will go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. She said, I'll break man's laws for God's laws. Sorry, sheriff. You tell us we can't have church, we're going to have church. Come on, somebody. You tell us, come on. There's not going to be a law of man that ever hinders the law of God. We obey the laws of the land, but Acts 5 says that we obey the laws of the land. She said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go in and risk my life. And she said, and if I perish. She said, if I perish. If I die. I die but you haven't lived until you found something worth dying for. It's this moment she came alive. It's this moment she came alive. She realized, Whew, I found something. This isn't my daddy's religion. Young people, this isn't just, oh, well, my grandmama brings me. If that's all it is, you won't last till the water gets hot. And when Haman's threats come, you'll, you'll, you'll compromise like many before you have. You'll just be in a long list of capitulators and people that caved when the pressure got hot. But if you're going to fulfill your purpose, you've got to hear the threats of Haman and say, kill me. What I've got and what I believe is bigger. Come on. It's bigger than a theological idea. What I have is grander than some cute songs. What I have is a love. I have a love for this truth. I have a love for this one God, Jesus, name, tongue, talk, and holiness way. This is who I am. It's moved from my knowledge in my head and it's got into my heart. I believe there is one God and I'm not just, come on, and I believe the day could come. Come on, and I believe it truly will that there will be swords raised. Come on, and you're going to have to make a a choice young men let me preach to this young generation that it could come that your life may be the price you pay but you stand firm you stand firm and if I perish let me die doing something that mattered let me live for something that was eternal don't let me lie down in my grave and have lived and died and done nothing let it have mattered beyond time let it reach beyond this place into eternity let it reach into this place Beyond eternity, it could cost you your life. I, 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 the question isn't: Are you willing to sacrifice a Sunday? And if a Sunday is a little too much for you, you ain't gonna make it. If a Monday night prayer meeting is asking too much. You haven't found the reason to live. I said if coming to daily prayer is too much of an ask, you haven't found a purpose. You're just pursuing fleeting things that are all gonna burn up. I know you want the, come on, I know you want the bigger house. The house is gonna burn. You want, I know we all want that, and I'm not against it. Have a nice house, have a big car. But baby, I'd rather live in a tent on the side of the road knowing that I was fulfilling what God had created me to be than anything else. Nothing else has to matter in your life. 
Come on, don't you shout and run the aisles about, about purpose uh, and I'll give my life uh, and you can't make prayer meeting. Oh, I'll give my life. You can't even make it to the altar. Come on, somebody. I'll give my life, but you can't even give up your pride. You're worried about what Sally's gonna think if you get up and shout and dance a little bit. You've gotta overcome that. You've gotta, that's why we're here. We're killing our flesh. Nothing inside of you wants to run those aisles. Your flesh doesn't wanna shout and scream and dance, but you gotta learn. I kill what I want so that I can do what God wants in my life. Hallelujah. And the, the Bible says, on the day of her divine destiny, she wakes up after three days of prayer and fasting. It wasn't flippant. It was, it was with prayer and fasting. And she goes, no doubt, in my mind's eye, I see a beautiful young lady with everything. She's got it. No doubt butterflies were inside her stomach. I imagine she had slept very little. Hands trembling, mouth dry. She pushes her way into that inner court and the chatter of the court slowly ceases as one servant notices her who whispers to another, who passes the word to the other until finally every eye is staring at her until they as one in unison realize the weight of the moment and then their eyes instantly spin and turn to the king. Life and death is in his hand. He gives her mercy. He reaches down and holds out the golden scepter to her. I'm always left with a question here. Why when Vashti rebelled was she expelled? But when Esther rebels, she's saved. Had to be that he knew her like he didn't know Vashti. Let me tell you something in this thing called purpose. It's more than just hooping and hollering and shouting and you better do it. It's a relationship with God. And if you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, if you're not talking to him every day, let me tell you something, you ain't going to make it. The difference in the ministries that are, that are temporary and long-term is one thing. They have personal roots, personal dedication. Esther knew the king, but most more importantly, the king knew Esther. That means that they had talked, and it had been more than, hey, hey king, thank you for my Cheerios. Have a nice day. Hey, king, I need some more... Hey, king, my mom's sick. Could you heal her? Hey, king, could you help me with this? Hey, king, no. Obviously, she called him, and she said, hey, I just wanted to tell you I love you. I just wanted to sh tell you how amazing you are. Well, okay, I got to go. No, don't go. I want to talk a little longer to you. I want to tell you about now. Now, no, you hang up first. No, you hang up first. No, you hang up first. And they fell asleep on the phone together because they were in love with each other. And that's what sustains us through the challenges, and that's what will get you through when you don't know why he extended mercy to some and others. I think it's that there's somebody, come on, that got on their knees every day and knew him. Does he know you? That's the question. Does he know you more than thank you, Jesus, for my food? And she's, she's standing there with a golden scepter extended mercy. And he says, what do you want? This is the question every subject would love to have asked of the king. You've got the king <laughs> right where you want him. The one who has all the power that can kill with the snap of his fingers. The one that can grant you up to half his kingdom. What do you want? She said, oh. Sorry, king, I was a little nervous. <laughs> I thought I was gonna die for a minute. <laughs> I just wanted to have dinner with you. And I'm sure the entire inner court was exactly like you. Huh? And the king was, hold on. I've never asked anybody what they wanted. And they said they just wanted me. You mean you risk your life? You mean you risk your reputation? You mean you risk everything just to come in here because you wanted to be with me? Well, then the answer is yes. I'll be with you. Let me tell you something about people that risk their reputation. Let me tell you the dinner that the king always comes to. 
the one you risk your reputation to get him at. You want the king to show up? Watch in your Bible. You'll find a rich man climbing up a tree risking his rich reputation. And Jesus stopped. And he said, I'm going to go home with you today. You'll find a lady with an issue of blood risking her reputation to get to Jesus. He said, I'll heal you today. You'll find a blind man on the side of the street saying, Jesus, with people saying, you look like a fool. You're a moron. You're crazy and way too emotional. And he said, I don't care. I just want to be with Jesus. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. You'll find four friends ripping a roof off of a house dropping them down and he'll say you can be healed because the people that don't care about their reputation but care about being with the king are the ones that he shows up to I wonder if you could give him a praise that risks your reputation I wonder if you could give him a shout that, that, that might just get you on Facebook could you give him a praise they're going to talk about at the Casa Ole this afternoon could you give him a shout that the visitors are going to tell their friends about you got to say I don't care what anybody thinks I just want to get to Jesus I just want to get to Jesus What if, what if today at the altar call you came up? Said, I ain't even gonna ask. Matter of fact, if you don't come to pre-service prayer and daily prayer in here, that's one reason I'm like, guys, come in here every day. Just pray, love him. That way when you need him, come on somebody. If the only time you ever come up here is when you need something, how, how weary that must be for God. That every time it's just about Here's my cancer, here's my problem, here's my kids, here's my pain, here's my... All it is, one, and that's good. You can cast your cares on him. But how beautiful it must be to heaven to watch Eastgate Church that comes in <laughs> at 4.30 on the Sunday night uh, and they got a prayer meeting going that says I love you Jesus uh, how beautiful it must be that when the choir starts singing we start dancing how beautiful it must be on Monday uh, as he looks down and the savor of sweet sacrificial and aroma is being brought before him do you love him? 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 That's the core of fulfilling your purpose is a deep love for the king. So she puts together a hot date. The Bible says the king shows up and has dinner. Man, he's like, oh, what do you want, baby? You got it. She says, oh, I just want to go on another date. They must have been singing, I just can't stop praising his name. I just can't stop praising his name. She was just like, I just want to love you. I just want you to know before I ask you for anything that I love you. It's a little principle I, I try to have at home. For every correction, let there be 10 I love yous. Mom and dad, you, you can tell them what not to do and we'll whoop out that whip and beat them halfway silly but how many times have you told him, I love you? The rod is necessary. Yes, I believe in the rod of correction. It's in the Bible. However, what's also in the Bible is that you love your children. It doesn't anywhere say use your hand on your children. It says use a rod. Those only things your hand should be doing is taking those kids and wrapping your arms around them and loving. I'm off my notes, but you ought to spend some time loving them. And the same is true with our Heavenly Father. God, I didn't come this Sunday morning. I know all of us have needs, every one of us, but I just want to dedicate this Sunday morning to saying, I love you, Jesus. I love you. I love you. You don't have to give us anything today. You've been good to me. You've been better to me than I could have ever imagined. I don't owe you. don't owe me anything. I owe you everything. The Bible says, he said, all right, I'll, I'll come back again. And then my favorite verse in the book of Esther is in chapter 6 and verse 1. And on that night, <laughs> I love this. He was so filled with anticipation, he couldn't sleep. That's how, kind of like my first date with Michelle. About every date with Michelle. I can't sleep hardly any night because I'm like, when you're sleeping with a beautiful, smoking hot lady like that, brother, you know what I'm talking about, Brother Davis. Woo! It's hard to sleep, you know. I'm like, man, I get to live with her. I get to be with her. And that's how that king was. He was like, oh, it's going to be great. He said, matter of fact, while I can't sleep, it's got me into a mode. 
It got me feeling something. Some kind of feeling up in me. I, I want to do something. Well, what you want to do, King? I want to bless somebody. Really? Yeah, read. Read to me. T let's read. Find me somebody I can bless. When you start praising him and loving him, he, it puts him in some kind of mood. When you start just saying, God, I love you because you're great. I love you because you're wonderful. I praise you because you're beautiful. Thank you for everything you've done. And God's just waiting for you to say, well, what do you want? And I'm not saying you can't bring your needs, but I'm just saying every once in a while, why don't you make it a, a, a habit that one day out of the week, you don't even throw up what you want. You just give him what he is and love him. And you get him in some kind of mood where he says, tell me, I can't hold it. I I want to know if you're not going to let me bless you I'm going to bless somebody else and so he found somebody to bless you know who he blessed Mordecai Woo! I said her family was blessed see you just think come on you think God is just going to save you while he's saving you he wants to bless you he's a God of exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think he's going to do more brother Anthony than just get me out he's going to put some blessings in my life on the way he's so good he'll bless you if you just bless him I said he's so good you can bless him he'll bless you if you'll just bless him And he blesses Mordecai and makes Haman look like a fool. You know the story. Haman looks bad. And, and Haman, he's having to administer the blessing to the people of God. The enemy yes. is having to bless. Come on, somebody. That's the same dude at your job been cursing you, having to be the one that does the Facebook post at the job blessing you. Come on. That's the kind of blessing God's like. He's like, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you. And I'm going to make sure that your enemy is the one that blesses you. Oh, isn't that my kind of God? I love living for him. Woo. Haman's ticked off now. That was our text. He goes home and tells his wife in verse 13 everything that had befallen him and the wise men around him. And his wife says, Mordecai, if he's one of those Jews, she said, now you left off some information when we was talking about him. You've been coming home every day complaining and talking about this dude at your job, but you forgot to tell me he went to Eastgate. You've been hating on them, talking about how the way they dress and the way they look and all that, but you, you forgot to tell me that's those Jesus named crazy people. Oh, man, if you'd have told me, you're going to fall before him. His own counselors looked at him and said, we already know what's going to happen to you, sucker. You're going down. You can't come up against those people and be victorious. No weapon formed against them ever prospers. That you, you are a fool. Let me tell you something about your enemy. Your enemy knows he's beat. Jesus shows up to the demoniac and the, the, the demons say, are you here to destroy us before our time? They know they're doomed. They, he already knows he's doomed. But it's a little different now in the king's house. The king's house has always had division between the, ki the, the king and the queen. There's always been disunity, but, but in this season... There's a unity. And the enemy hadn't considered the fact that maybe the bride and the groom were on the same page. <laughs> you overlooked one thing. They've been praising. They've been praying. They've been going to church and reading their Bibles. They're in love. Come on. I know, I know there's, the, 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 the world is going crazy, but the devil's forgot one thing. The church. The church is alive. The bride is alive. The church is vibrant and it's prayerful. More prayerful than ever before. I've got a speed. The clock is red. I guess we could quit right there. Y'all want to wanna just finish? Okay, we got six yeses. I take that. If I get one more, it'd be God's number. Anybody else? Seven. 
the banquet happens and the king says okay now what is it what can you please just let me bless you and she says well Haman Haman's got a plan to kill all of us and, and it's it's going to take us all out and the king is furious angry Haman turns against the queen and the story comes to a pinnacle at 9 of 7 chapter 7 verse 9 and Herbana, one of the chamberlains, said to the king, Behold, also the gallows fit fifty cubits high, which Haman hath made for Mordecai, who hath spoken good for the king, standeth in the house of Haman. Then the king saith, Hang him thereon. The entire time Haman had been building the gallows to destroy the people of God. But he was building his own demise. You're so worried about everything coming against you. So they hanged Haman on the gallows he had prepared for Mordecai. As I close, two minutes, I take you on a quick journey 600 years prior to this story. In a small town called Gath, there in Canaan, land of the Philistines, a certain blacksmith is hammering away on his anvil clang, clang, clang. The door opens quickly and abruptly and there before him stands a man, a servant. He says, I'm here to purchase a sword. The smith doesn't even look up. He continues his work. He points to the wall and says, I have many. Pick, take your pick. He said, oh no, sir. This one will be custom made for it's going to be larger than any sword you've made before. This will be the one you will make that we will give to the champion among us, this man who was born with a purpose to annihilate the people of God. This sword will behead the king of Israel. What kind of sword must I make? The smith asked. He says, this sword will be called Goliath's sword. He turns quickly and begins a new construction and spends several days with fire, heat, Steel, hammering away, ding, and the clang rings out through Gath. As the sword is being manufactured, the one that will one day destroy the adversary. Isaiah 54 and 16 says, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire and bringeth forth an instrument for his work. He said the smith is making his work to destroy verse 17 the next verse but it says read it together no <laughs> he's making it cling 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 but no weapon that's formed against you is going to prosper and a few years later Goliath stands with that sword that was crafted by a blacksmith to prosper against the adversary sheathed and he says today I'm going to kill you son little shepherd boy I'm going to annihilate you from the face of the planet and your children be slaves to mine and you will be in bondage as you should have been years before and little David looks at him <laughs> and he says in verse 46 of 17 of the first book of Samuel he says this day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand he said, and I'm going to smite you. Then he said, I will cut your head off. Hold on now. He's standing there with a slingshot. He does not have a sword. But he's looking at the sword. And he said, oh, huh. I already know how I'm going to kill you. Well, how are you going to cut his head off, David? You don't have a sword. Oh, because if that's the weapon he intends to kill me with, <laughs> the promise is that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. He said, my promise is this, that whatever weapon you have coming for me, God's going to turn it against you. That's just, the, that's just how it's been. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, people of God, for thousands of years that has been our history, that the gallows of Haman, they turned into his destruction, that the sword of Goliath turned into his demise, and what is in our history remains in our present and will hold true in our destiny, that there will be no weapon. I said there will be no weapon. 
Amen. The enemy can conjure. He can scheme his, his deadly and demonic plans, but they will not conquer. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. I don't care what the enemy has said. He's been talking smack all the time. That's all he's known to do his whole life. His existence is to belittle with his mouth, but he is a liar and greater is he for you are truly more than a conqueror. I said if it's depression that's got its sword unshield, she's get ready. That's what you're about to take him out with. You're about to conquer. God is going to give you victory over depression. If it's anger, uncontrolled rage, you ought to look at that sword of rage and say in the name of Jesus, the weapon will not prosper. Come on, if it's pornography and lust, you ought to look at that sword of lust and say you're not going to prosper. If it's divorce that's trying to rip across your family, you ought to say you don't prosper. Alcoholism and drug addiction, greed, it doesn't prosper. It doesn't prosper. No weapon crafted, formed, or formulated can prosper. I know I've gone a little long, but I need you to grab your neighbor's hand because this altar call is going to be a little different. We're going to do it a little different. We're not going to bring our needs. We're just going to praise Him. And while you're praising Him, you might get the thought, what do you need? Here's what you say. Oh, I just want you to meet me at 4.30. I'm going to come back tonight and do it again. And you come back tonight into this house and why don't we turn this prayer first 30 minutes into a praise session. Come on. We're going to start it right now. We're going to continue it into Sunday night. Why don't you grab the neighbor's hand. Whatever you feel to do, just praise him to ruin your reputation on earth. Like you don't care what anybody says. God in the name, lift your voice so loud every demon in hell. Come on. The devil cannot hear your thoughts. God can read your mind, but the devil can't. You've got to say it out loud. You've got to let hell know with some volume. He doesn't, come on, he doesn't passively come in and ask permission. He came in and stole your peace. He came in and took, come on, your joy. He took your children from you. He didn't ask permission. Why do you keep asking permission? Open your mouth. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence. You've got to unsheathe the sword. You've got to go in and praise in prayer. You've got that extravagant praise and glorious worship uh, uninhibited by your feelings uninhibited by your pray, pride uh, uninhibited by your past failures uh, lift up your hands close your eyes uh, make it just so that it's you the master and some noise uh, let your feet perhaps begin to move uh, let your arms begin to wave uh, let your voice exalt uh, the name that is above every name and as you begin to praise him I feel it uh, come on I begin to sense the angelic presence of heaven uh, as angels begin to minister Minister, uh, God, we're not here for us today. Uh, we're dedicating Sunday morning right here in October. Come on, 2023. And we're giving it to you, Jesus. I love you. I love you. No weapon. Uh, I know the enemy told you you were going to die, uh, but no weapon's going to prosper. Uh, I know that he told you you were going to make it, but no weapon's going to prosper. Uh, greater is he. Uh, if you've never been filled with the Holy Ghost, it's your day. Uh, if you've never received him in your heart, today's your day. Uh, if you've never been buried in water, today's your day. Uh, if you're bearing a burden, uh, don't worry about the burden. Worry about the being a blessing. Uh, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. That's it, young people. Just start praising him. Praise him, praise him, praise him. That's it, young man. I know it's Sunday morning. It's not a youth camp, but, but it's okay. I'm here, Jesus, just to bless you on a Sunday morning. Come on, young lady. I wonder if you could. Come on, teenage girl. Go ahead and just praise him. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Give him glory. Give him honor and worship. Lord, we love you. We love you. We love you. Hands are lifted. I love you. I praise you. I wonder if you could give him thanks. Come on, don't speak in tongues. For one minute, I, I know that's really weird, but I want you to not speak in tongues. I just want you to throw your head back, raise your hands, and begin to thank Him. 
You can think of 10,000 things, but just start with one and work your way down the list. Start with a house and a car and health. Start with a family and strength. Come on, go ahead. Whatever it is, you got something to be thankful for. Out loud, out loud. Let the devil, let your neighbor. You ought to thank God like you're bragging about your God to your neighbor. Come on, you ought to brag on your God so loud that your neighbor, come on, gets encouraged. Thank you for healing my body. Thank you. Come on, Tommy Gunner. That's it. You're not in AFib this morning. You're in the house of God. Come on, that's it. You're in the house of God. Thank you, Jesus, for the strength I have. Thank you, Jesus. I'm not in a hospital room. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my family. Thank you, Jesus, for bringing me up out of darkness. Thank you that the chains are gone. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, it's hard, isn't it? Come on, default is to go speak in tongues. But I want you to stay. You can go a little longer. You've got more things. Thank you for my clothes. Come on, thank you for my job. All you've been doing is complaining about it, but it pays your bills. Thank you for my boss. Come on, thank you for my coworkers. Thank you, Jesus, for my purpose. God, I thank you for the church, and I thank you for you. Thank you for the cross in Calvary. Thank you for peace in my heart and joy. Thank you for deliverance and money in my bank account. God, I wish there was more, but you have been good and it's enough for me. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus.